Hi, I'm Ella Feingold, orchestrator. Um, I hope you're doing really well. Um, I thought we could have a chat today about some of the considerations and mindfulness that we need to have when orchestrating piano music. So make some coffee. I'm having some cold brew and waking up. Or some tea and let's sit and have a chat. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos uh, about Ravel's transcription techniques with the orchestra, um, orchestrating piano music, you'll know we sort of went right into the deep end and we um, went right into specific techniques and specific colors. I did that very deliberately because I wanted those who weren't aware of his craft to just get really excited and see all of the possibilities and whatnot. Now I would like to sort of zoom out a little bit and talk about some of the things that we need to pay attention to before we even start assigning colors and orchestrating the music. You know, having piano music and getting excited about confining this melody into the cor anglais and using harmonics and all of these things that I'm sure as orchestrators, you know, we, we dream of and get excited about imagining colors and all of these things. We need to sort of slow our roll and look very, very carefully at the piano music and decide certain things um, before we assign colors. So, um, what are those things? Um, I'd like to just bring up a couple of broad things, some bullet points. Um, I don't know if I'll have time to offer solutions to all of these things. I certainly will in um, other videos, but these are just things we need to consider and to be mindful. So the first thing is what notes we need to get rid of in the piano writing and what notes we need to add. So everything's relative and these are general bullet points but typically we need to be careful of closely voiced chords in the piano near the bass um, low intervals of say thirds are typically revoiced um, where you might just have a low octave or a fifth and that low third you know gets inverted um, with low fifths just a a warning that we also sort of need to be careful because sometimes low fifths in the piano can sound very heavy in the orchestra. Um, that's more of a color thing, but just something also to be, you know, mindful of. So that's something about taking things out of the bottom end because it's going to be heavy and muddy. So deletion. Another thing would be addition. Um, I'd say one of the most common issues is in piano writing, the hands at times can be far apart and we have all this space in the middle. And that doesn't necessarily present a problem in piano music because at times the sustain pedal's down. So there is a mist kind of enveloping all of the music and we don't notice those things. When we go to orchestrate that music, if we are to be quite literal with the spacing of the hands, you're going to notice that your orchestration sounds a little bit austere, you know, impoverished. It'll be hollow and dry. As a formula or a recipe, one of the ways to get around that issue is to simply have something that holds a common tone. Um, sort of going into Ravel's sonorous fluid, what can some of those things be? Well, of course, you'll hear me say a lot, you know, everything is relative and it depends on the case. Um, if the music is pianissimo, maybe a single held horn note, um, a held clarinet note, a held viola note, um, I'd say those are probably the most common formulas to um, take care of that issue when there's sort of a hollowness. Um, now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, where do we fill in harmony? 
Um, sometimes we're filling it in because we have to know um, how to put it. Um, we have to know the limitations of the hands. So if you are a pianist, I'm sure a lot of these things you're able to see very, very quickly. Um, I'm not a pianist, I'm a guitar player. So some of these things I have to actually get under my fingers and play at the piano before I can understand some things of the limitation of the hands. So in general, we always have to pay atten attention to how the hands are occupied. Wow, I'm stuttering here. More cold brew. Okay. Um, so another thing is that you will typically see in tutis um, and music that's say mezzo forte um, and above that we're filling out the texture, we're filling out the middle, we're adding upper octaves. I'll just show a couple of examples here, um, but this is actually Ravel's orchestration to one of the movements of Schubert's um, Carnival, which is a very rare orchestration, and I'll explain in another video. But what I did here um, is any note that is colored in red is something that Ravel added in the orchestration. Um, you'll see that clearly upper notes are added and stuff in the middle. So let's maybe talk about why. Um, let's say you're a church organist and you play Hammond B3 or C3 or maybe you are a pipe organist. If you play in church and you have all the draw bars pulled in or pushed in and maybe just the third draw bar out, you get that beautiful sort of warm French horn-like color, or, you know, on pipe organ, the Bourdin stop. If the music's fortissimo, are you really going to be playing with that exact same stop? Probably not, because you're not getting all of the partials and harmonics that you need in order to achieve fortissimo. So in the orchestra, this is sort of like, you know, pulling out the stops. Of course, this also gets into the harmonic series and things needing to be tightly voiced the higher they go up. Um, this is an example from pictures at an exhibition. This is the last movement and the notes in black here are what was actually written including this note in purple. So here's a real-life example. Ravel omits this purple note in the orchestration. These red notes he adds, so he's filling in what's in the middle here. Here's the next chord. In this case, he's getting rid of this note in the orchestra and again, filling in. So what I would like to offer up as a tip, this may seem incredibly boring and um, something you just don't want to do, but I would encourage you to go through his orchestration or any orchestration of a composer where they transcribed piano music and simply fill in the notes in the piano part. So maybe print out another part and see what things you notice for yourself. Where are they filling it in? Is it just because of the dynamic I know to fill it in? Is it because of the texture? When you learn this part of the craft, um, your transcriptions from piano to orchestra will get a lot better because it won't just be about color, it'll be about construction. Um, so I would absolutely encourage you to do this. Um, I just wanted to show you really quickly um, a sketch that Charles Kiclin did of one of his orchestrations of a Schubert piece and what were some of the things that went into it. So let me just drag this over here. And this sort of looks a mess, but what a wonderful resource this is to see his pre or you know, version pre-orchestral, his, his pre-orchestration version, uh, to see all the things that he considered. I don't want to get into some of these things because 
where this video will go on forever. But you can see there's a short, a sort of short score sketch where he's talking about the colors that he wants. But what I want to show is where he's actually deleting notes here from a texture and filling him in, filling the notes in. And so there's pages and pages of this. Um, and having this resource, you can get this online at Lubeanf. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to give this out, so you know you can download it yourself. But um, it's important to look at things like this and see where things are filled in, you know, counter lines and whatnot. So. Um, one last thing I want to say, you know, I talked about in another video about Ravel's um, values as an orchestrator, things that he um, always considered and thought was important, some that might be surprising as far as, you know, being a magician and, and fooling, duping the listener. Um, just a couple of values that I have that I think are important are, you know, balance when we're transferring piano to orchestra, which of course is our job. Um, fullness, um, if the music's quiet, to just sort of have a quiet subtlety with the background colors that you're choosing, you know, to fill in. Um, most importantly, you know, imagination. This is sort of like the ultimate video game we have with transferring piano to the orchestra. Um, you know, it's wonderful to, you know, work on the construction and then think in terms of color and then try and put yourself into the mind of the player. And um, that's where sort of solo literature comes in with how comfortable you are on the instrument and what's idiomatic. Um, so let's end the video there and um, we can talk about other things in future videos and we'll hyper focus like arpeggiation, you know, is this line that the composer wrote, is this something structural and a counterline? And well, if it is, then I'm not going to tamper with that. Is this thing just sort of ornamentation with the pedal down to sort of give fullness to the piano texture? Yeah, it is okay, well then that's going to sort of invite me to maybe fill it in with thirds or sixths or octaves. So we could talk about every kind of gesture, but I just thought today would be important to just talk about um, more of the construction things, the bare bone things, to be mindful. Um, I guess if I had to give a lesson, if that's okay, uh, if you're able to... Um, get, um, I'm trying to think which version it is, Eulenberg. Actually, I have it right here, oddly enough. Um, if you're able to get the Eulenberg version of um, pictures at an exhibition, it has the original piano part at the bottom. So what might be interesting is to take a pencil, or if you don't mind marking up the score, since you're probably not going to be playing the piano part at the bottom, to fill in all the harmony that's in the orchestra into the piano part as a way of learning why Ravel omitted notes and added notes. And I promise you, if you go through this whole thing, and believe it or not, I did because I'm frigging nuts, um, you will definitely be a lot more mindful when you see piano music to automatically go, cool, we, I need to add an octave here, I need to add parallel thirds in here. Um, I need to add a you know an octave in the bass, blah blah blah. So I would encourage you to do that with pictures at an exhibition. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later.